Well, we'll be looking at whether or not it should be compulsory for a presidential debate or governorship amongst others. And we'll be, we'll be joined by legal practitioner Festus Oguche. Before then, on the heels of the controversy surrounding the ongoing presidential debate ahead of the 2023 general elections, the Conference of Nigerian Political Parties, that's the CNPP, has called on the National Assembly to take steps to enact laws to make participation in presidential governorship debates mandatory and part of Nigerian electoral process. Well, the N or the CNPP believes in legalizing the presidential and governorship debate, according to them, it will go a long way in helping the electorate make informed decision on the choices of the chief executive officer of a state or the Federal Republic of Nigeria, or even the choice of a lawmaker to represent his or her constituency. The CPN has therefore called on the National Assembly to immediately set up modalities for making it customary for the candidates who engage in debate as part of Nigeria's electioneering process, especially at the presidential governorship levels in the first stance. Uh, according to them, they also say that emphasis is that this debate will help the people, enlighten them, uh, and also uh, create an avenue for engagement of candidates and giving the electorate the opportunity to interface with the leaders for proper assessment to determine the level of preparedness for leadership, commitment, and governance. Well, the list is almost on and the conversation cannot stop. But this morning, like I mentioned earlier on, a legal practitioner, Festus Oguche, joins the conversation. Festus, it's good to have you join us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So um, my question to you is, do you think that um, it should be compulsory, debate should be mandatory and compulsory in Nigeria? Yes, it should be. It should be mandatory. It should be compulsory, whichever way you want it. Um, because it's very important that you have to tell the people what you're going to deliver, your, your objectives, your mandate, and um, uh, such other things that will convince them to vote you into office. And when you begin to shy away from attending such um, debates and conferences to talk to the people, then apparently you don't have an agenda. But it's not something that should be legalized, so to speak, because I know that in the United States, which uh, system we follow very religiously, it's a matter of tradition. Uh, tradition in the sense that uh, the presidential candidate or the governorship candidate has to go and meet the people. That's where the idea of how um, um, uh, town hall meetings emerged and emanated. And uh, I think it's a thing of joy for anybody who is a candidate for any of those elective, executive elective positions to meet to the people and to talk to them about their manifesto, about their agenda, about what they want to do, convince them. As a matter of fact, in very sophisticated um, uh, democracies, uh, candidates go from door to door. That one happens chiefly in the United Kingdom and parts of Europe, even in Germany. And uh, they go from door to door trying to convince people that this is what is obtainable, this is how I want to do, this is what I'm going to do, and they commit them to their promises, to the to the words they say. And sometimes in some jurisdictions, I think they are looking at, and that is one of the things that were issues that were raised the other day at the prestigious law faculty of the River State University here, or whether a candidate can make a promise and not fulfilling it and cannot be charged to court for for obtaining by false pretense. You know, and I think it is obtainable that way because if you get to, to the podium and talk to the people, that look, you vote for me because I'm going to make that one naira equal to 50 kobo. I'm going to develop the economy. I'm going to bring all that infrastructure. And at the end of the day, get to the political office and begin to do a different thing altogether. I think you should be criminally liable. And I think that's the extent to which this. Uh, this uh, uh, issue is, is, is going to extend to a, uh, in such manner that uh, politicians will not just go on the platform and begin to reel out series of promises and all that are not meeting the obligations in the citizenry. All right. So, but quickly, let's also make reference, you know, to the United States. Shortly after the series of John Kennedy and Richard Nixon's a series of debate, presidential debate, it became uh, a thing of uh, a public concern because the public began to make, they, they started making uh, a demand. They started an expectation. The public started expecting uh, this debate. So it's, 
whatever it is that we have, because we're following, is as a result of, you know, uh, the demand of the public. Of course now, uh, presidential debate has become the American's institution, and that's because the people demanded it. So have we gotten to that point where, you know, we can rightly say that um, uh, we're not forcing this, because we also have stances where some presidential candidates and what have you declined to become part of the process. But it's become an institution of the United States because of the people and the demand that they have placed on it. So with this, do you still think that it should be compulsory? Uh, Hello, are you with me? Yes, please. Yes, I, I would say that, yes. Uh, we have gotten to that stage, like I said earlier, where these uh, debates have must be compulsory and persons must be invited. And when they are invited, they must attend such debates as to prove their competence and prove their capacity to deliver in the course of the electoral process. These are very, very important. But then, if it gets to a situation where um, a presidential candidate begins now to shy away from such debates, then it becomes uh, a different kettle of fish altogether. It's not that you can find him liable. It's not... Um, uh, written in any law that uh, maybe a candidate must, if he doesn't uh, come, he's liable in any way. But just being a tradition, that if he absents himself from that kind of um, opportunity to speak to the people, to address them on these vital issues of uh, governance that is craving their support and craving their votes, of course, it, it gives a very good signal that that's a very bad candidate. So for the United States, it's a tradition. You give the example of those debates between Nixon and um, this other candidate, and how it, 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 it went through. But then as on such platforms, that is where, apart from delivering or telling the people your agenda, a whole lot of things will come to play. Because it's, you afford the people the opportunity to assess your, 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 not just your competence alone, not just your capacity, but also your, your, your level of decency, your level of civility, your, your maturity everything will come to bear. And that's why it's all very, very, very important. Even if it's not there in any of the written books, either in the Electoral Act or in the Constitution, it's very, very straightforward that it is very vital and imperative. Mm. I, I, I hope like... I've answered your question. I hope I answered your question. Because oh, well, I, not quite. I was but distracted. Well, Dr. Festus, uh, Mr. Festus, or Sir Festus, however, we have to go now. And I, I, I was hoping that we had enough time, but unfortunately, that's not, you know, uh, our question. But however, uh, we hope that we get to that point where whether or not it should become mandatory, it's important that it's, uh, you know, it should be considered. It should be very critical. But if we look at who we are copying and who were, uh, where this actually originated from, we found that they bond out from the people. The people be began to be interested and they placed the demand on all of that. Well, that's it this morning. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Festus Uguche, for being part of the show. Well, he, uh, Dr. Festus, I don't know why I'm calling him doctor, but that's fine. He's a legal practitioner. He joins us this morning from uh, River State, Port Harcourt. And that's it. If you missed out on any part of the conversation, it would be great to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bopo, and thanks for staying with us. We'll definitely return tomorrow with The Breakfast.